In this video, I will be going over the basics for Dutch roof construction, not the assembly of the roof. However, if there is enough interest in the video, I will definitely make a step-by-step -step instruction video on how to build this. Now, the first thing I want to point out is that a Dutch roof is not that much different than a gable roof. We're going to be using common roof rafters, ceiling joists, and lookouts to support our fascia board. And we will be adding two small hips with some fill rafters to create the lower section of the Dutch roof. And even though most do-it-yourselfers are going to need a little more information about this type of construction, some of you can actually just look at the video if you understand a little bit about roof framing, enough to where you can cut a common rafter, a hip, and some fill rafters. And these are the fill rafters right here, also called jack rafters. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at it here. Here we have our lookouts. I'm just going to kind of zoom around here to provide you with a few more perspectives. And then we will go ahead and take this section of the roof apart so that we can put it back together. So basically for a Dutch roof, we're going to have a setback or a measurement where the longer common rafters will be starting. And in this method here, I'm going to be using a doubler. You can always install a beam. And then I'm going to be installing gable studs on top. And these gable studs will be used to support the ledger for the shorter common rafters, as well as create a wall so that we can attach our stucco or siding or other wall finish materials to it. And this ceiling joist right here might need to be smaller. In this video here, I'm using 2x8s. And depending upon the pitch or the setback, you might need to use a 2x6 or a 2x4. Or even change the directions and run them perpendicular from this ceiling joist here to make it work. And I do have other examples of Dutch roof framing at our website. And you're probably going to find them in the garage building section. And you can see here where the ridge supporting stud is not going to be full bearing on the doubler. You could always install this doubler on the other side of the roof rafter and then put a fill board in between it, maybe a 2x4, to provide you with a little more structural support. But I really don't think that's going to be necessary to provide you with a little more structural support. Or you could always run a 2x4 base for the framing plate like you would do down here for the wall framing. And there are other ways to build the Dutch roof. I am also going to be providing other examples of that. Unless, of course, there isn't much interest in the video. Next up, let's go ahead and attach the ledger. We're going to be using a 2x10. And to find the height of the ledger, all you need to do is place a common rafter over here, grab a block, and then line everything up. Mark the top of the block like you would the ridge and then do the same thing on the other side. And of course, if I was you, I wouldn't nail the heck out of the ledger and tell you place a few common rafters in there to make sure that everything is fitting OK. So again, this part of it right here is just a bunch of common rafters. And I would like to say is easier, but I know that at one time this was difficult for me to do. And even though that was over 40 years ago, I still remember the difficult time I had figuring out some of this construction stuff. So don't feel bad if this doesn't make a lot of sense. I get you. Next up, let's go ahead and install our hips. Now I want to show you here how this little section ties together. And you can see here where this part of the hip right here is blending into this section of the common roof rafter. This line lines up with this edge here. And that will allow the sheathing to work out OK. However, this really isn't. So this is probably going to be the key spot for you to focus on. Because you can see here where this is a little higher or a little lower. So I just kind of wanted to show you that. I know a lot of people get confused when it comes to installing a hip at the top and the bottom and making everything blend in. And again, I get it. At one time, I had a difficult time with that. And I also want to point out that the bottom part of the hip rafter, we're going to be using a 2x10 here for our hip, 2x8 for the rafters. And it won't always be full bearing. However, most building engineers accept this as a common construction method. Then we're going to install our jack rafters or our fill rafters. 
another construction term that can be confusing because we have so many different terms that we use in different areas that mean the same thing. And here's a nice view of the ceiling joist where it would need to notch a little bit to have the hip work out okay. And if the hip was going to be larger or the ceiling joist was going to be larger, you could see again where we could have a problem here. And then, of course, I held the ceiling joist back a little bit so that we could run our blocks through. You can always run the ceiling joist over to the edge of the wall framing and then butt the blocks against the ceiling joist. And I believe the minimum that a ceiling joist can sit on top of a beam or wall framing is an inch and a half. Here we're going to have two inches. Next up, let's go ahead and install our shaped blocks and you can see here where we have an angle at the top so that we can create a nice perimeter connection to the roof sheathing and basically through the wall framing. Next up let's go ahead and take a look at some drywall backing blocks that you might need to install if you're going to be installing drywall. Another common method used to create a section of the building we can actually nail the drywall to. Just make sure that the blocks are strong enough. Most people use screws nowadays for drywall. However, years ago when I would install these blocks myself and then go to nail them with drywall nails, I would often move the blocks as I was hammering my nail into them, especially if it was a hard block or I hit a knot. So make sure that they are firmly secured. Next up, let's go ahead and install our lookouts for the fascia board. Then we can throw our fascia board on there. And what comes after the fascia board? The roof sheathing. Let's go ahead and throw that on there and then start wrapping this video up with the last thing I'm going to point out. And that would be to make sure that you leave enough room between the bottom of this section of the fascia board and the top of the sheathing so that you can install your roof shingles underneath the fascia board. And as always, if you have any questions at all, feel free to leave them in the comment area because sometimes your questions are used to create videos like this one.